Thank you, Frieder, and good morning, all. It's a privilege to be here on what I think is an historic event. Today's summit, from my mind, uh, celebrates a long-standing partnership between the University of California and our Indian collaborators. This summit actually represents an opportunity to raise that collaboration to the next level. We have, of course, been exchanging talent and ideas between the University of California and India for, for decades, um, and it's been a flow of people both directions. But we, we have an awful lot in common. We are, of course, we both come from uh, a deep tradition of democracy. Uh, we both embrace innovation. We both strive to harness our knowledge to serve society. Today at the UC, I'm sorry, the USA, India, I'm being rather parochial for those of you that are outside the state of California. <laughs> Bear with me, we will all benefit. But it is, it is an historic event today between the University of California and academia and industry and the government of India. To set the framework, let me remind some of you or inform some of you the scope of the University of California. Um, then I'll discuss my own view of the University of California's international strategy and how it, is, how it has evolved and how it continues to evolve. And I'll say a few words about what I see as the UC-India partnership and the strength of that partnership. Let me start off with the University of California. For those from UC, you know this or you would not have passed um, the test. But, but others, let me, let me remind you, uh, the University of California was started in 1868 with virtually no money and no land, but several people who had a desire to bring academics, to bring the brightest minds to California. Nearly 140 years later, the UC has grown into a network of 10 campuses, uh, over 200,000 students that stretches 1,000 miles along California from, from the north to the south. Nine of our campuses would be considered in their own right supreme academic institutions. The 10th, which we opened just last September, is, is, is heralded as the research university, the first research university of the 21st century. Today, as one university, we um, have had remarkable success carrying our mission. And the mission, I try to remind people whenever I speak, our mission is threefold. It is to create, to create new knowledge, create new knowledge. The second is to create the next generation of those who will create. Because if we don't do that, everything stops. The third mission is to take those creations in service to society. Uh, people often think of, it, think of it as research, education, and public service, but I would like to think of it more in a creation mode. To give you a greater sense of what the, what the university has accomplished, I'll give you a few benchmarks, things that we're particularly proud of. To date, 52 scholars affiliated with the University of California have won Nobel Prizes, including 19 in the past decade. Last year, the University of California topped the list of universities worldwide in developing new patents. We create, on average, about three inventions a day. Biotech industry in California, one in four biotech companies in California were created by students or faculty from the University of California. And if you go through every biotech company in the, in the state of California, there are UC alumni and faculty up and down the management ranks. After taking over as, as UC president in 2003, I thought the university really had to develop a global international strategy. As I said, we have collaborations, many, many collaborations uh, between various groups at UC and throughout industry. Our university is a world class research, has world class research capacity, and I'm really eager to expand that in, in a mission that I regard as our d and research, development, and delivery. We cannot do that by ourselves. 
We must do that with partners. We must do that with industrial partners, and we must do that with government partners. I, I believe the university is responsible for the research, of course, development in partnership, and delivery to society. We cannot just drop it off and expect it to be delivered by someone else. The RD&D allows us to collaborate across public and private sectors, and I think what's going on here in CalIT2 at UCSD is a supreme example of our d and I cite one other example that is in our healthcare mission. Basic fundamental research, development of new drugs, and delivery through clinical trials. It has, it's the university responsible in partnership. As I mentioned earlier, the university takes great pride in its partnership with Indian collaborators. And we've, we've, been, we've been collaborating with, with, Indi with India and individual Indians for years. And I'll mention uh, two of them, two collaborations that I believe have had global impact. The first, uh, from the realm of science, uh, is centered here but, but spread throughout the world. And that is, that's the Atmospheric Brown Cloud Project. The second, from the realm of art, is the, is the Satajic Ray archives. Let me give you a few details on both of those as examples that lay out the roadmap for how we can move into the future. The Atmospheric Brown Cloud Project, which, which a lot of you know, is, is led by, by Ram Ramanathan of the Scripps Institution of Oceanography here at UC San Diego. This multinational effort assesses the global impact of air pollution caused by the burning of fuels and agricultural wastes. That burning goes on throughout the world. There's no one nation, no one person to blame for this. We have the global responsibility for it. It affects climate, water cycles, agriculture, public health, I, the quality of life. This, ape, this uh, brown cloud project is unprecedented in its global sweep. Ram has created a network of over 100 collaborators from the University of California, Japan, Korea, Europe, China, India, other parts of the United States, with 10 Indian and 20 East Asian institutions participating. The team is assessing, is assessing such specific impacts as the extent to which atmospheric brown clouds have masked global warming due to the greenhouse effect, the effects of climate change on the South and East Asian monsoon systems, and the impact of precipitation changes on food production. The project has been made possible by a $15 million grant in funding from the UN Environmental Program, the United States, Sweden, India, Japan, Thailand, China. It's remarkable. It's remarkable. It's, it's, the, it's the vision of the future. It's what we have to do as universities, as government agencies, to face these huge problems that we're facing. These partners and collaborators are united in one basic human desire, one that I've articulated many times. I grew up looking at stars and blue sky. I would like my grandchildren and my grandchildren's grandchildren to see the same stars I grew up looking at. One other example, far on the other end of the spectrum of our academic activities. The Satyajik Raid Archives. These archives at UC Santa Cruz are directed by history professor Dilip Basu. Basu made history himself in 1992 when he was sent to India by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to present a Lifetime Achievement Award, Oscar, a Lifetime Achievement Oscar, to his ailing mentor, Director Ray. Since that time, Dilip has devoted himself to preserving the legacy of that great Indian filmmaker. I remember in the 60s seeing these films. He has helped establish this, this world-class archives of this famous director. Film is very fragile, as you all know, and a world-class treasure, something that has to be maintained. You can't just put it in a box and leave it. Thanks to the Ray Archive, Californians and Indians have a superb opportunity to work together to preserve this treasure for future generations. UC Santa Cruz has also established 
two other endowments in Indian classical music, one named after the outstanding Ali Akbar Khan. The arts and humanities are and will remain a key part of the UC India collaboration. Let me wrap up by looking at the future of our partnership. We have a goal, we have a roadmap, we now must accomplish that. In March, we signed a landmark memo of understanding with the Indian government. I was supposed to be there, I was putting fires out here instead. But I'll get back there. It's ambitious. It's ambitious educationally, it's ambitious technologically, it's ambitious politically. I'm delighted that our partners are here today and that I'm honored to have President Abdul Kalam, who will be with us via technology very shortly. This memo of understanding is open-ended in scope. It's up to our own imagination how broad and far we will reach with this. As we proceed down this path together, let us keep in mind that the citizens of California and India have placed their trust in us. For you techies, there's no sum game, sum rule here. This is not a zero-sum game, or in more colloquial language, this is win-win. We can all benefit. On this historic event, let's renew our dedication to work together to serve our citizens and raise the quality of life in the world. On behalf of the University of California, I want to express my appreciation to each of you for being here today, either physically here or here throughout the world via technology. I'm eager to learn from these discussions and I'm eager to move forward with our partners to solve these huge world problems. Welcome. Thank you.